Hello again, everyone. This is a rock the bar. Here is always seeking the truth. My video topic for today will be addressing baptism. Exactly what is baptism and is it required to enter the kingdom of heaven? Now, the word baptism in the Strong's Concordance is number G908, and it means immersion or submission. It is the public purification rite of being fully immersed in water as commanded by Christ. Upon confessing one's sins and professing their faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are completely submerged under water. When they come back up, this symbolizes them being born again by the Holy Spirit and beginning a new life. Being baptized and having your mind reformed by the Holy Spirit is how we obtain forgiveness for our past and future sins and become qualified to enter into Christ's kingdom. Without baptism, it is not possible to enter the kingdom that is to come when Christ returns. Now, that's not my opinion. That's Christ's words himself. Now, I'm going to read from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. And it reads, And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Christ said that we must be born of water and the Spirit. Being born of the water is the physical part of being baptized. Being born of the Spirit is a spiritual part that happens after baptism, when we receive the Holy Spirit. That scripture alone should be enough to express the importance of baptism. But let's go through some more precepts to further explain this. I'm going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and it reads, In those days John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent means to change one's mind or to think differently or to consider. So John is telling us that we need to reform our minds. Now I'm going to jump down to verses 5 and 6. It reads, Then went out him to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, this same thing is mentioned in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, and it reads, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. So baptism is for the remission of sins, and it comes with the confession of your sins. This is why we all need to be baptized. I'm going to read from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 23. It reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So because we all have sinned, we all need to be cleansed, and that's what baptism does. I'm going to read from the book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 16. It reads, And now, why tarriest thou? Arise, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Baptism is for the cleansing of our sins, and it is required for our salvation. Some people suggest that we don't need a water baptism and the water baptism is not required it's just optional they even try to use the scriptures to suggest this one of the scriptures that people try to use is matthew chapter 3 verse 11 it reads i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i who shows i am not worthy whose shoes i am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
First of all, this scripture does not tell us that we don't have to receive a water baptism. This is John talking about two prophetic events that will take place in the future. Well, one of them already has. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is referring to when the people receive the Holy Spirit during the time of Pentecost, or 50 days after the death of Christ. And the baptism of fire is referring to the trials that we all will endure upon Christ's second coming. Proof of that is in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, and it reads, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. This was Israel being instructed to stay in Jerusalem after the death of Christ, so they could receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the time of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 goes into explain the events that took place during Pentecost. Essentially what happened was the Holy Spirit came down and gave people the ability to speak in different tongues, so that the people could all understand one another. This was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But look at what Peter instructed them to do even after everyone had already received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is Acts chapter 2, verses 38 through 39, and it reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yeshua Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So, well after Christ had been crucified, buried, and risen, the, disciple, the disciples were still preaching the need for water baptism. Pentecost was the fulfillment of the prophecy being pertaining to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, what about the baptism of fire? I'm going to read from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 2 through 4, and it reads, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver. And they may offer unto the Most High an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judea and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in the former years. So this is a future prophecy of when Christ returns. He will purify us again, but this time with fire. Only those who are cleansed with the water will even make it through the fire. But even then, not everyone will make it. I'm going to read from the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verses 8 through 9, and it reads, And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver as refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on the name they shall call on my name, and, will, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. So again, this is the future prophecy concerning the day of our Lord. Through this purge of fire only, one third of the remnant of people will make it. This is not talking about one third of everyone. This will only be one third of those that will believe and follow Christ. I also have heard people say that water baptism only pertains to the physical children of Israel. They suggest that Gentiles can't receive water baptism. This also goes against the scriptures. Matthew 28, Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Christ commanded the disciples to baptize all nations. 
This means all people, including Gentiles. This is made clear in Acts, the 10th chapter. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35 reads, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The Most High accepts people of all nations, as long as they work in righteousness. Now jumping down to verses 44 through 45, it reads, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is more proof that Gentiles can also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then finally, Peter goes on to say in verse 47 and 48. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tar tarry certain days. So yes, even Gentiles can receive baptism in the name of the Most High. Then finally, there are always people who go against the water baptism that bring up the sinner that died on the cross next to Christ. They point out that he wasn't baptized, but yet he was saved. We can read this in Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43, and it reads, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto, said unto Yeshia, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Yeshia said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So, we see here that Christ granted this man salvation. But what did the man do? He confessed that he was a sinner, and he publicly, and he publicly accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. That is exactly what baptism symbolizes. The man on, on the cross did not reject water baptism. He literally was unable to. So for those of us that have the opportunity to receive a water baptism but do not, we do not fall in the same category as the man that died on the cross next to Christ. We should be followers of Christ, not followers of the man that died next to Christ. And Christ himself received a water baptism. I'm going to read from the book of Matthew. Chapter 3, verses 15, or excuse me, verses 13 through 15, and it reads Then cometh Yeshia from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yeshia answered him and said, and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. This is also confirmed in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. It reads, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize, with, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass in those days that Yeshua came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. So, even Christ was baptized with water. Simply saying that you believe in Christ is not enough. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 16 reads, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So the point is we are supposed to be we are supposed to believe and be baptized 
in order to obtain salvation. Now, as always, I have more videos on my page that go into further detail on this topic. But if you like this video, you found it informative, please feel free to hit like and subscribe to my page for other videos. Um, as always, like I said, there's going to be more videos following this video in my playlist that go into more detail. Um, but again, I always want you to thank you all for watching. And remember, no matter what you do, to always seek the truth. Shalom.